everybody and welcome to our animal antics. You may have noticed we've just brought someone along up here. This is our skunk show. So welcome, I am Arthur, my name's Arthur. I'm joined by Cherry here, our trainer and keeper and the star of the show there is Storm. So Storm and this magic stick that we're going to be used to be training Storm with. So Storm is a striped skunk. Now there are actually lots of different types of skunks out there. So Storm is a striped skunk, but there are lots of different ones out there with things like spots. Um, there are striped skunks, there are hooded skunks, so they've got one big colour down the back of them. And the spotty ones are all sorts of lovely patterns. So these animals are really cool and really diverse. They all come from North America, Canada, that kind of area. Now Storm, a little bit special compared to our other ones, she's got this lovely little pink nose, so we can work her out right away. So she is here today to show off some of her natural behaviour and show off how she does things, how she finds her food, how she does in the wild. Now, what we're doing here with this brilliant stick that my friend Cherry here has, we're shaking this along. This is going to work by her giving a little paw to it or she'll touch it with her nose and then she's going to get a treat. Now she's got really tasty treats in there. I'm sure we all love them too. Now, they're little wriggly things like this. They, can I guess what we're feeding them? Can you see that there? Was that like big worms basically? They're like big mealworms, so they're called Morio worms. Yum! Very, very tasty. So Storm loves these things, and that's really rewarding to us. So there are a few reasons why we do that with this stick. So we call it target training. Now that's really helpful for her, for us to help look after her. So we use it for things like getting her onto scales so we can check how much she's weighing. We'll also use it to get her in and out of her pet carrier. So it's really helpful for us, but it's also really rewarding for Storm makes everything really easier so we also shake it if you have a listen you might notice that you pick up on a little rattling noise there as well now storm as lovely as she is has not got the best eyesight out there so sometimes we do need a little bit of sound to help her along her way to find that just in case we lose our keeper or we lose where her treat is where we're trying to take her she can follow that sound instead there she goes she's really really good at that so she's really going by hearing and smell as well. So she's got a fantastic sense of smell to look up for those treats. And she will listen to that sound and follow that. And she'll follow Cherry there and they'll fantastic stick. So we call this positive reinforcement what we're doing here. So as we're giving a treat after she's done something good, we're reinforcing a good behavior. And if she does something bad, which we hope she won't, so just be nice and careful around the edges. We don't want to touch her if she does come close. But if she ever does anything bad, we tend to, for her, we ignore it. So we don't reward that bad behaviour. And then that will slowly, that will discourage her from doing those things because we're encouraging her to do the good things. So we like to use positive reinforcement, as we call it. Now, she is doing this voluntarily. So she's come out here because she enjoys doing this. So we would only take her out if she wants to come. We call her in the, just beforehand to bring her along. And she knows she's going to get lots of nice treats, lots of tasty goodness. And it does give her a little bit of time away from home. So Storm is a mum of two, and she's got her partner there as well. You may see her in the Amazoo area on occasion. Now, she quite enjoys coming out here, but she gets a little break from home. She gets a few treats, and she gets to learn a thing or two. So does anybody know what skunks are really well known for? What's their big selling point? What can they do? What are we thinking of? I'm seeing some waving hands. <laughs> So it's the spraying, isn't it? It's the farts, that's what they're good at. Really good stuff. Um, so there are a few little things about that that we're gonna clarify up. It's a bit different to what we might imagine. So they don't do it all the time. It's actually quite a lot of effort to do that. And really it's a last resort for a skunk to use their spray. So they can actually only hold about two fluid ounces. It's not a huge amount of the stuff. And it's very hard to replace that. So she doesn't even want to use it all in one go. She won't waste that, that's a really, really valuable way to scare off a predator using that spray. But she'll do a few other things first that are a bit easier. So what she'll tend to do is she'll stomp around on the ground, she'll growl and she'll bark, um, and she'll sort of spit and hiss. So she'll do all of those things before she has to spend her spray because it's a lot of work to get that back again. Um, so she can actually control the potency of it. So that's how smelly it is, how much she uses, based on what the threat is and how much she thinks that she might need to use. Um, so what she can do is she can essentially spray it out like a fine mist. Or she can decide that she needs to unload the entire thing at once if she's really under threat. But she doesn't want to do that. 
Um, that kind of movie style thing that we see where they're just always spraying over the place is a little bit exaggerated. Uh, they're actually a little sweetheart. She's a really lovely little girl. Um, so, but that spray is still really interesting. So they can spray around about 15 foot they can reach with this stuff. And they can do it roughly sort of five consecutive jet sprays. So she can do a lot in one go if she needs to. And we think the smell probably detectable from just about under a mile away. So that's quite smelly. You say it smells of sort of onions, sulphur, uh, rotten eggs, bad cabbage. So not the best of smells. I think she's found something else here. What are we looking at? <laughs> so she's very curious and well, she really likes using that nose. So what you're seeing here is a lot of natural behaviour but also a rewarding piece of enrichment. Um, that just means it's stimulating natural behaviour and it's good for her but again good for us to help us train her. Now so they actually are able to spray that spray before their eyes are open. So as soon as they're born they've got that one defence ready for them for an emergency. But also, if they do manage to spray someone else in the eyes, then that's going to temporarily blind them for a, for a few days or so. So it is really dangerous stuff when they need to use it. Um, for us, that is count, would count as a minor burn, so it is quite a skin irritant. We don't want those to do that, of course. Now, out there, she does have quite a few predators. They generally, mostly speaking, are birds of prey, so big birds can come down on these guys. Otherwise, they do have things like bobcats, foxes, uh, coyotes and cougars, there are a few other animals out there, but most of them don't really want to tangle these. So it tends to be the birds of prey that are the main ones going for them, because they can take them by surprise and not have to deal with all that smell. Now of course they are hunters themselves, so most of the year it's not the biggest of prey, but they will go for things. During the spring and the summer they tend to go for mostly insects and grubs, small things like that, but over the winter it changes a little bit, so their diet changes throughout the year. So over the winter they're going to hunt things like frogs and toads, lots of small mammals, small reptiles, so it's a bit more sparse what they're eating. They eat birds' eggs as well. Um, so they will eat other small things, so we do actually consider them as omnivores. Do we know what omnivores means? Yeah. Yeah? Omnivores. Yeah, humans are omnivores. Yeah, that's it. So they, they eat everything, pretty much. So they, they, they eat all, from all different categories of food. So they're not specifically limited to just meat or just vegetation. So, and she's also an opportunist. So basically means that she's going to eat anything that she gets hold of, any that, anything that works for her. She's going to take opportunity there. Um, so these guys, in the wild, what they tend to do is they will dig burrows for their um, habitat, within their habitat. But they are, as I say, they are opportunists as well. So some things they will do is they will take advantage of different things that they can hold, house themselves in, so they will go brilliant there. So, um, so they will go underneath things like uh, decking or a shed or something like that. She'll take advantage of those things because she's very smart and she knows when things are going to be a useful place to house herself in. Now, unfortunately, because of that, in their native country, which is North America um, and Canada, but they are sometimes seen as pests because they're going to be invading all those areas and there is a little bit of problem there with pest control sometimes they are the, the victim of that um, another issue of course is the things that they're eating, small rodents, sometimes those are considered pests and so if we're using pesticides sometimes they can eat those and they get that through them as well which can be a problem but these guys are very tasty and very safe you can see she's hoovering those up really easily Now. This is a problem for them in the wild. Other threats we do have include bushfires, um, there is a bit of habitat loss as well, and we do want to keep our habitat for these guys, but luckily they are still under the category of least concern, which means we're not too worried about them, but we do want to still protect their habitat, because the things that they're eating, of course, could be threatened, and we don't want anything to endanger them. So she's been brilliant today. So they are really resilient, adaptable creatures, and that I think is why they are still surviving out there in good numbers. But I'm going to leave my talk there for now. Um, we will still be around here. You're welcome to come and say hello, ask us a few questions. Um, but the next talk happening will be at three o'clock, and that is in Amazoo. So that's just behind us that way, with all the monkeys. So there's a monkey talk there happening shortly. So we say, well done to Storm. Shall we have a little clap for Storm? Thank you very much. She's been brilliant, hasn't she? Thank you very much, guys. Have a fantastic day as well.